Hello guys, today let's talk about Laravel Jetstream and how it works. We will try to understand what's under the hood and we will try to customize one part of it. So Laravel Jetstream came out in Laravel 8 as authentication scaffolding and when you install Laravel project with Jetstream you see this dashboard and you can go to profile management and edit your name, email, password. There's also two-factor authentication, account delete features, and a few more stuff. But for many people, the code of Jetstream felt pretty new, a pretty drastical change to compare with Laravel UI, which was kind of a standard before Laravel 8. Because with Jetstream, there are a lot of new technologies for those who haven't used them before. So Tailwind CSS instead of Bootstrap, Blade components and slots if you haven't used them. Then you have to choose Livewire or Inertia as a stack. Then there's also Laravel Fortify to update the profile and authentication operation. So how to make sense of all of that? Let's dive in together with help of official Jetstream documentation. And as an example, in profile information, we will add a third field, username. So new field in the database, and let's try to update that with Jetstream. And let's start from the very, very beginning and let's install Laravel with Jetstream with this command. So Laravel new, I have a project to folder, minus minus jet. Then it asks, which stack do you prefer, Livewire or Inertia? And I will choose Livewire. Do you need the Teams? No, in our case. And then it installs all the Jetstream stuff with all the dependencies. Okay, it's all successful and when we launch the domain locally project2.test we see this, which is default Laravel 8 page, but on top of that we have login and register and this is where Jetstream comes in. So login and registration form is powered by Jetstream and if we try to fill in with fake filler Chrome extension and register, we are inside of that dashboard, which you have already seen in the beginning of this video and we can edit the profile. Now, how does it work under the hood? Let's find the code place where the profile information is edited. And I have done that behind the scenes. If you navigate to resources, views, profile, and then there are blade files, and one of them is update profile information form. It's a typical blade file, but for those of you who haven't used Laravel blade components, it may look unfamiliar. So what is that xjet something? What is that submit property? Then if you scroll down to the actual profile editing name field is xjet label, xjet input, input error, what are all those things? So first let's understand where that xjet comes from. If we open Laravel documentation for Jetstream, if we click Jetstream structure and scroll down a bit, we will see Livewire components publishing. And those are blade components, exactly those xjet something. So if we publish those, launch that command, copy and paste, they come from vendor folder to our resources views. And let's open those resources, views, vendor, Jetstream components. And here you can see all the xjet something just without xjet prefix. So xjet label is actually label blade, which is just this. It's a simple label with a few variables. If we go to xjet input, input is this, just input with attributes with some values. And then input error is a validation error, which looks like this. Error, typical blade command. And how those things are initialized with xjet, you should go to jetstream service provider. It's in vendor, but you don't need to edit that. There's a function configure components, and here you can see register component function, where you see blade component, jetstream components, some component with alias jet dash. So if you are not familiar with blade components, those are components that are transformed with x dash something in your blade and this alias adds another prefix. So final result here is x dash, jet dash and then whatever is the component name. And if it sounds too complicated to you, you don't have to use blade slots in Jetstream. You can just do input. So for example, if we remove x jet label, label for value and change that to this label like this and let's refresh the page visually it shouldn't change as you can see email something like this so those blade components are just the way to shorten the code and 
compile the repeating code into some components like input, like error, like label and stuff like that. And there are in total around 20 components or so and they are used in the blade of profile editing forms in Jetstream. Now next thing we need to understand is how Livewire is enabled here. So XJet form section with submit is actually, if we open form section, it's a blade, but inside of that blade we have wire submit prevent. So submit is the variable which is passed here. So update profile information becomes a part of this variable, which then should fire live wire method update profile information. And those live wire components are inside of vendor. So they are not publishable as I understand. And if we go to vendor, right click, find in path, update profile information, you will see this component. So there's a folder vendor Laravel Jetstream source HTTP live wire, and you have a dozen of components here. And this is how it looks in live wire. So if we search for update profile information, there's a method which is called when you click save here. So that save is a form submit, which actually is going here and then there's updater class we will get to that in a minute that updates the user profile with this state or if you enable photo upload which we didn't in this case it's merged into the array and that updater is a fortify class so another new thing here fortify is an engine that powers the auth management from the back end and if we open the documentation for jetstream and go to profile management actions, it's all documented. And part of that Jetstream fresh new code is that you have to read all the documentation. So it says app actions fortify update the information. And if we navigate to app actions fortify, here we have update profile information. And this is the actual code that happens. Update, we have array of input validation, and then we update the user. So now let's try to add the username in our form here. Let's close some stuff. We don't need this. In the form, we just duplicate, copy and paste this one. For example, name, email, and there will be username. So username, label for username, value username. ID username, type text. Wire model defer, this is live wire stuff, so state username, autocomplete username. And input error is also username. Now we need to actually add that username to the database, and this is not Jetstream specific, so we do PHP artisan make migration, add username to users table. And in our migration, database migrations, add username, table string, username knowable. And in the user model, we need to add that as fillable. This is the default user model, and we add the username here. And let's migrate the data. I will re-migrate everything because I have some other project here. So our new migration is present. So we add username to users table. And if we refresh our profile, of course, we've receded the database. So let's go to the home page and register again. Fake filler, register. And if we go to profile, we see number three field, username. But if we type something in, we save. It's actually saved. And this is where Livewire is used, so it wouldn't refresh all the page. It saves only that profile section. But if we refresh that profile, username isn't saved. So where do we save that? In the Fortify action. We open again, and we'll close some stuff. So here in the Fortify action, at the very end, we have username, and input contains all the input, all the state from live wire component input username and let's refresh the page let's put abc here save and refresh the page and as you can see username is present and if we open the database 
here's our users table and at the very end we have username with ABC which is saved successfully. So this is an overview of Jetstream, how it works and how to customize a small part of it. And as I said in the beginning of this video, it may sound overwhelming and overcomplicated for those who haven't used any of those new technologies. But a few weeks ago, there was kind of a fight between community and Taylor of why he overcomplicated the stuff, and he explained it really well. This is the way how he would personally build a new modern web app in 2020. So he prefers Tailwind over Bootstrap. He uses Blade components to avoid duplication of the code. He uses Fortify to have a separate auth backend so you would be able to use any frontend, Vue.js, React or Blade on the frontend and Fortify would power only the backend. And then Livewire or Inertia is just additional layer to add reactivity to the page, so dynamic things. So the forms wouldn't refresh the whole page, but instead would just update, as we saw, a specific section on the page. So it's a modern user experience instead of refreshing and reloading the page every time. You may agree or disagree with that, but that's Taylor's way, how he suggests us to build modern web apps. If you want to go that path, I totally recommend you to at least try Jetstream and see what's under the hood. And if you see something unfamiliar, don't be afraid, just navigate the code, search in all the project, read the Jetstream documentation, it was updated a few times. And I'm pretty sure you will learn something along the way, even if you don't want to use Jetstream, even if you don't like it, but as a learning process, just as an open source project to learn from, it's a good way to learn. And speaking of learning, I can help you with one part of that, which is Laravel Livewire. Recently, I've launched a separate course called Practical Livewire from Scratch. For those of you who haven't started and haven't tried Livewire, in just one week, I have over 200 students with already testimonial present. So it seems like that topic resonated with the community. And I encourage you to enroll in my course on Laravel Livewire or any other of my courses on laraveldaily.teachable.com. See you guys in other videos.